Hello, I'm James Hortop from Merlin Equipment and I'm here today to speak to you about the flagship of the Kiss A range, the 3000 watt pure sine wave DC to AC power inverter. At 3000 watts, this is the most powerful inverter within the Kiss A range. The unit will run at 3000 watts continuously and allows you to operate even bigger loads than before. Unlike many other inverters, this unit has a built-in AC changeover switch. It's also pure sine wave output, so it's suitable for all electronics. As with any installation with an inverter, if you have shore power in a ring main and you want your inverter to energize the ring main, you have to have a method of selection between shore power or inverter power. That can either be through a manual switch or it can be through an automatic style changeover box like this one here that Merlin makes. However, the Kisei 3000 watt unit has the automatic changeover switch built in to the front of the unit. This makes installation much easier, but it also makes operation of the inverter completely automatic. We'll come back to this in a minute because what we're going to do is just review the installation and then we're going to see the unit operating. So at the rear of the unit, we've got the main DC connections down to the battery. So a main positive and a main negative onto our main battery bank. I'd just like to show you something with the battery bank that is important. You'll notice that our negative runs to this side of this battery. These are two batteries in parallel, so there's the black to black, red to red. The positive from the inverter runs to the other side. This means that whenever you pull power through the system, it has to pull it through both the batteries, and it means that both will stay equalised. The other thing that you'll notice here, if we zoom right in, the batteries themselves are supplied with a bolt, a flat washer and a spring washer. And we've seen many installations where either people don't install the washers or they install them incorrectly. And the washer is designed so that you have the, the lug straight against the battery terminal itself, the flat washer, the, the sprung washer and then the bolt. And these need to be done up nice and tight. The other thing you'll notice with this inverter installation is the cables are nice and short and you, would, you really need to try to get the inverter as close as possible to the batteries. So on the front of the inverter, we've got our 230 volt mains socket, which you would use just in the same way as any other DC to AC inverter. You'll also notice there's two cables running in here. One is an AC input and one is an AC output. The AC input is the blue one. The AC output runs to this extension loop here. If I take the wiring box off the front of the unit, we'll see how this is connected. off so within here this is the AC input so we have our live our neutral and our earth and our AC output live neutral and earth one of the features that this inverter has also is a neutral earth grounding relay and you can see this link here that's been made between the terminals which say GP1 and GP2 and what this link does is it grounds the neutral of the output of the inverter to earth when the unit is in inverter mode only. And there's a very good reason for this. You should use a residual current circuit breaker. One of these on the output of the inverter. So when it's on, you only press the test button, it'll trip off, or if it sees a fault current, it'll trip off. That should be in the output inverter. I haven't got it set up on this one. The building or the um, uh, shore power connection that you're connected to will also have one of these. Now the issue is, is that when you are on inverter only mode, to make the RCD that's on your vehicle, your boat, operate, that neutral earth has to be bonded. However, when it's on shore power mode, the shore power RCD would see a neutral earth fault and would disconnect and actually see that as a problem and, and open up. Therefore, you must have a neutral ground relay and most inverters don't have that installed as standard. So always remember with an inverter that they could become live when you connect the batteries so always complete the AC wiring before you complete the DC wiring but with our Kisei unit you've got your main connection AC input and AC output for connection to uh, the rest of your system. As I said earlier you can use the socket on the front of the unit just to plug in if you so wish. Over to the right side of the unit, we've got a USB socket. A USB socket is just so that you can recharge a mobile phone uh, if you want to, but we also use it for firmware upgrades. And then you can see this panel on the front of the unit. So this is a, a multifunction panel. What's very nice about this 
is that if we unscrew it, the panel pops out from the front, you can disconnect it, and you can mount the panel remotely from the inverter itself. The inverter is supplied with a remote panel cable of seven and a half meters. So with installation complete, we're ready to start using the inverter. Now at the moment, I've got the shore power disconnected. So the unit would just work as a straightforward DC to AC inverter. So if we have a scenario that we're out on our boat or on our motorhome, uh, out in the field or out at sea, and we want to run something from our inverter, let's say a microwave in this case, we can switch the unit on. And then the display itself will show us when we're ready to go. So it just goes through a startup routine. So the inverter is ready to operate now and I can turn on the microwave. So this is a 800 watt microwave and the unit will run that all day. You can also run some other loads from the inverter itself. Now, one particularly nasty load is a coffee maker. Now that coffee maker has a multitude of different types of electrical load built into it. So we've got actuators, we've got pumps, we've got heating elements, all of the things that are particularly tricky and difficult for an inverter to operate. So if I switch on the coffee machine, it goes through its heating up phase. And it's pulling a very, very large amount of power while it's heating up. And you can see the inverter will operate that with no, no problems whatsoever. The fans come on automatically, help keep the unit cool. So the coffee maker's gone through its startup routine and let's get ourselves a nice long coffee. So there's motors in there grinding away, there's actuators and push rods, the heating element is running inside that coffee machine and now the pump's going to start. It's pulling a huge amount of power, about three and a half kilowatts, just to make us a cup of coffee. However, that's what our customers want these days, they want to be able to drink decent coffee when they're in our RV in their remote located home or on their boat. So it's finished our coffee. Cheers. So we're going to run another top kitchen load. In this case, this is a 3000 watt kettle, just to show the, the power capability of this unit. And so that's now running a 3000 watt express kettle. Now, normally an inverter won't run a conventional kettle like this. You'll have to get one of the smaller units, the hotel type small kettles, because uh, they're rated only at about 1500 watts but if you want to use a full-size domestic kettle you need to be looking at a 3000 watt inverter so today we've shown you an inverter operating a microwave an 800 watt microwave a very complex coffee cappuccino maker and a 3000 watt express kettle and you can see the units not complaining not bleeping not buzzing so the first scenario that we looked at was being out in your boat or out in the field in your RV and using the unit as a straightforward DC to AC power inverter. Remember, it's also got a changeover switch. So imagine we've just got back into port, back onto the campsite, we're gonna plug in. Now when we plug in, if you have a look on the front of the unit, you'll see that the status light starts to flash. That is the inverter waiting for the incoming AC power to stabilize. It checks whether it's the right polarity, right voltage, etc. But also if you were to be plugging that into a generator, it allows the generator to speed up to speed before applying heavy load to it. So you can just heard it click then, you'll see the lights have gone green, which means it's now all running from shore. There's two important things that we need to consider with an AC changeover switch. Firstly, is that when you're not on board, you may have left certain things running like a heater or a dehumidifier. But the last thing you want to happen is that if somebody unplugs your boat or your RV, is the batteries start to run that equipment through the inverter because it's going to flatten the batteries very, very quickly. So what you can do is you can actually change modes on this so that if you lose shore power, the unit doesn't switch on automatically or you can activate it so it does. The second thing is the speed of the changeover is very, very fast. It's fast enough to keep a computer up, so you can actually use this a bit like a UPS system. What does it mean on your boat or your RV? It means that highly annoying things like clocks on your coffee maker or your DVD player or your TV don't change. So you can see that we've got the clock on now. And if I just pull the plug, you can see straight away it's just switched over and it's done it so quickly that the coffee machine hasn't even noticed it. 
Now, if you've got a manual switchover type system, what will happen is you'll have to go around and reset all those clocks on your microwave, your TVs, your DVD players, and everything else. Or, even more annoyingly, if you're working away on your computer and somebody trips over the shore power socket and the power accidentally is flipped off, you don't lose your work on your computer. So like the rest of the Kisse range, the inverter is a pure sine wave output, so it's suitable for use with audio-visual equipment and even the most sensitive test equipment or um, electronic loads like computers. It's overload, overheat, short circuit protected. It's also AC back feed protected. If the battery voltage goes down to 10.8 volts, the unit will give you an audible warning and it will shut itself down. The unit's available at 3000 watts, the 12 volt input, and it's available either directly from Merlin, Power Store, or one of our dealers. Now, if you'd like to know more information about this unit, please take a look at our website, www.merlinequipment.com, or you can give us a call on 01202 697979, whether myself or one of my colleagues will be very happy to take you through the product. Or alternatively, if you find yourself down in the southwest here in Exeter, you're very welcome to come to our showroom, take a look around, and come and see some inverters operating. Thank you.